Hey everyone, in today's video we are talking all about this guy right here, the 10 frame. Now we already know that 10 frames are so important in helping our young students develop number sense within our base 10 system. So in today's video I want to share three meaningful ways we can use 10 frames with our students. If you are ready to see these ideas and activities, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. meaningful activity to use with a 10 frame is to teach subitizing. Now when students subitize something that means they are able to look at a group of objects and determine exactly how many are there without counting them. Now a 10 frame is a great way for students to do that. For example, if they are looking at this right here, they could see this in many different ways. They might see five and two and know that it is seven. They might see the three orange and the four yellow and know that three and four is seven. They might notice these four over here in kind of the shape of a four that they would see on a dice plus these three and no, it is seven. It doesn't matter which way they kind of group these dots here, but they should be able to look at this and recognize that it is seven without having to count up each one. Now, of course, they're not just going to know how to do that right away. Subitizing is a skill that we teach. So we wouldn't want to necessarily start with all of these numbers right here. We would probably start with one, we'd start with two, we'd start with three like this. Now, in terms of how to teach this skill, I will usually introduce it during a number talk, which is going to be at the beginning of our math block and I'll have all my students come to the rug and I will do what is called quick images. Now, I've done a whole video on this number sense routine. It looks like this right here. But when you're doing a quick image, it might be a card, it could be this literal magnet 10 frame that I have with these fun little counters here. And all I would do is hold it up for a very quick, maybe one, two seconds, I'd say, and put it down. And then I simply ask my students, I prompt them, what did you see? How many counters did you see? I would probably start with the prompt, what did you see? Um, especially in kindergarten and first grade at the beginning of the year. And they would tell me I saw orange circles. Some might say I saw three orange circles. I would ask them for more. Where did you see them? Where were they in the 10 frame? And have students kind of expand on that. Then you can give them another quick image. Quick up, quick down, have them explain it. Now for then, another one. Ah, still the two there, but notice how they moved. This very simple practice will get students to see this number two many different ways, or whatever number you're showing, right? They'll be able to see here that this is two without always having to count one, two. They know that it's two here. They know that it's two here. They'll know it's two here so on and so forth. Now, a quick image number talk isn't something that necessarily stops at the beginning of the year, but instead it progresses through different skills. So students might recognize that this is four very quickly, but also do they recognize that it is two and two? Right now they might see this as just, you know, four dots in the same representation as we see it on a die. So that way also when you're playing games and they roll this, they don't need to count up each dot. But then also I like to show them this right here. Still four, it's in the same exact way, but what do you notice? Here we notice that we have two yellow and two orange. So now we are still subitizing, but we're also getting students to recognize, hmm, there's some different ways we can make this number. Super quick side note, but these 10 frames, they are whiteboard and they are magnetic with 50 different colors. This is what it looks like. It's a little 10 frame set here. Um, and it has five different colors for the big magnets. It comes with little cards, dry erase marks, dice, and tons of like prompts for you to give your students. Great for small groups. So I'm gonna link this down in the description. Um, not sponsored, just wanted to share because I love it and use it all the time. Okay, so teaching students how to subitize through a number talk and doing something like a quick image is probably the most effective way to get started with this. But then once students are used to practicing this skill, you'll want to give them some fun ways to practice this. In my number sense unit for kindergarten and first grade, I do have this set up in a few different ways. Here I have number line remake, where students will have to go ahead and remake a number line. And as you can see, they are not just by number, some of them are 10 frames, we have tally marks, we have other things. Also in that unit is this game right here, it's called Number Grid Flash and Find, and there are a bunch of different cards with 10 frames in them, where students will go ahead and flash one of the cards quickly, like a, their own mini quick image, and then they will put it down and students in the group have to find that number in their grid. 
It's basically like a quick bingo game that you can play with students, but they are in charge and they go through and take turns actually flipping the card quickly, putting it back down, and they have to check each other's work. If you go ahead and make your own little 10 frame cards too, you can print out a bunch of them and students can go ahead and play war. So they will each, you know, flip a 10 frame card and determine whose is bigger and they play that just like the regular card game. And you can also have them put all the cards face down and flip them over to play memory. You would definitely start with some teacher guided instruction and then have them practice this supatizing skill. The second meaningful way to have students use a 10 frame is to have them practice addition. Now, unitizing is probably one of the biggest conceptual pieces of knowledge that we want our students to understand before they leave first grade. And unitizing essentially is getting students to recognize that 10 ones equals one 10. Again, our base 10 system works in these groups of 10. So this 10 frame is largely representative of, you know, the same thing like our little base 10 blocks. It's representative of that. This is a 10. When we fill this in, we don't need to count each one. We look at it, we know 10. We also know that we can take apart each one and it'll be 10 ones. Let me show you some examples of how I would use this when teaching students how to add. Okay, so as students progress through math skills, they will start by simply counting, right? Their first set of skills are going to just count things, one, two, and three. Then we will work on subitizing, like we already mentioned, where they don't have to count it. They can just look and see that this represents three. Next, they'll actually start counting sets. So here we have three, let me move this up, and here we have two. Now, when counting sets, students might not yet recognize that these can be joined. This kind of counting sets individually is a first step. So we have three, we have two. They might look at this and recognize a few things. This has less, this has more, but then we want students to work on joining sets. And this is where our 10 frame comes in. Now in kindergarten, they actually recommend if you have a five frame to start there because a lot of your addition is going to start within five. So here students can actually combine them. We have our three plus our two equals five. Now you can show students this just the way I did right there. And then ideally students can have their own 10 frames. They don't need these magnet ones. They can just have a paper one with any sort of cubes or manipulatives and you can have them add some more sets. Again, kindergarten, we're sticking within five. What if I have two yellow and one green? We have three. What if I have two yellow, two green? we have four. We're building this idea of actually having two separate sets and combining them to make one. Once our students are familiar with addition within five, we want to move higher than that, of course. So let's grab some other counters. We might have five plus two. Now, when students build this, you want them to recognize that they can fill up this five first and then have two more. Here, we're getting students used to things like counting on. I can subitize that this is five, two more, six, seven. They might even just be able to look at this when they've combined it and subitize this already to know it's seven. When using 10 frames to add, you are going to do a lot of hands-on practice just like I'm doing right here. In fact, you can ramp up the difficulty with these skills by adding in things like three add-ins like we do in first grade. Here we have five plus two plus one equals eight. But again, you'll always want your students to recognize these as three different sets or two different sets, right? Whatever we're doing here, we're doing three add-ins. Three different sets when combined can make one unit. It can make the number eight. Students are able to think flexibly about their numbers. Now, of course, in first grade, you are going to want to go up to within 20. And in kindergarten, I know that your students are even working on teen numbers. So we need our students to recognize that a teen number is a 10 plus some units. So let's try adding some bigger numbers. We have a set over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus one, two, three, four, five, eight plus five. We have our two different sets. Now when students go ahead and add this, we always want them to fill up this 10 frame first. So let's fill it up. Let's see what we have. We're gonna see how much the red plus the yellow are. Here we have eight. Oh, we know we need two of the yellow to make the 10. And then there's three left over. 
So here our eight plus five is actually 10 and three. It's the same, it's 13. So eight plus five is 13 and 10 plus three is 13. The physical manipulation of having separate sets and then adding them up together really helps students think flexibly about these numbers. Again, they just had a set of eight over here and a set of six over here. They both equal 13, but now look at our sets. We have a set of 10 and a set of three. Again, both 13. So when you're doing this, this is something you will want students to practice and actually physically manipulate over and over and over. Meaningful activity number three when using a 10 frame is to connect them to number bonds. Now, one of the best things about using a 10 frame is that it really helps students think about numbers flexibly. For example, when we were joining sets, we might have six yellow plus the two orange equals eight. Now, if we were going to put this on a number bond, we would have eight being the whole, and then we would have two and we would have six two to represent our orange and six to represent our yellow. But it's important for students to recognize, just like when we're decomposing numbers using that number bond, that this is the number eight. Six and two is eight. What is this? Still eight, five and three. What is this? Still eight, four and four. It's important for them to recognize the many different ways that they can make these numbers. And just like when we did joining sets too, we can do this with two number frames, two tens frames, just to show how we actually combine them. We have our six over here, our four over here, and then we can do the physical act of combining these here and representing it on a number bond. Now using this representation on a number bond is important as well because we also bring in our subtraction. So here we have our 10, but if we take away the four oranges, what are we left with? We're left with six yellow. So 10 minus four equals six. If we have 10 again and we take away the six yellow, what are we left with? It's important for students to recognize that on the number bond, those numbers aren't moving, they aren't changing. We still have the two parts, four and six, and we have the whole 10. But there's many different ways, essentially like a fact family, to show this relationship. Now don't forget your 10 frame knowledge is not going to end at a 10. In fact, one of the most important skills for students to recognize in kindergarten and first grade is that a teen number is a 10 and that many units. So this number would represent 12 and it is 10 plus the two. So make sure as you're progressing in kindergarten and first grade that you also go to 20 using two 10 frames. And again, represented on a number bond, the whole here would be 12 and each part, each color would be six here. And to represent that, I would probably move these four over here to see again how these numbers are very flexible. Six orange over here, six yellow over here, combine them to make 12. I know I said I would link this 10 frame set and I will do that down in the description, but I also wanted to show you some of the cards that it comes with in case you're having trouble, you know, wondering what to prompt your students when using 10 frame in a small group. So here's an example of a like level one question and you would have students actually go ahead and build that number frame. So they would build two there and they have to answer. It says, write how many discs there are. So they could go ahead and write that down. They would have to ask, what is the next number? So if that's two, what would be next? Next, three, what comes before this number? One. And then there's some bonus questions you could ask them, how many more do you need to make five? How many more do you need to make 10? That's all just on one of the little cards and they progress up through um, addition, subtraction, all sorts of different fun skills. So honestly, the set is great. All right, so there you have three meaningful ways to use a 10 frame in your own kindergarten and first grade classroom. I do hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas on how to get the most out of these 10 frames for your students. As always, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.